Hello, everybody. <coughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> starting with a dry mouth already. Um, welcome to a Road <laughs> Reflections. Uh, I'm your host, Krishmo, and this will be the final Road Reflection of 2020. <sighs> Hope you guys had a good year. Um... We're gonna kick things off. I wanna I wanna run through the check. I just had a uh, a doctor's appointment that went great because I do the OMT, uh, osteopathic manipulative therapy stuff. And because uh, but last year I found out I had sc- <laughs> I have mild scoliosis, um, that probably started uh, when you know way back in the day, and. <laughs> My my doctor, who's fucking awesome, has really helped me out, and she's great with giving, like, tips. So, uh, I'm going to try to look for some resistance bands to add to my my workout. We, we got an elliptical that's been working out pretty great, uh, and I'm going to try to, like, mix the cardio in with the stretching and, and some days of, like, uh, the weightlifting that I was doing pretty regularly. Um, so I, I, I feel, I feel good is it right now is sort of the thing that I'm saying. I'm also working on my posture a lot more, (laughs) uh, like actively trying to work on my posture a lot more, but it's hard when, you know, a majority of what you do is sit in a car and then, you know, when I go take care of the elderly lady, we're sitting on the couch together or sitting on a chair if, if we're playing games. Um, and then I come home and I'm sitting in my bed and then I wake up the next day and I'm sitting in a chair. Uh, so, you know, trying to keep active, trying to keep moving. And that's a big thing for scoliosis. I learned today is movement. So, uh, I guess the hand gestures that I do while I'm on stage, uh, which I haven't really been on stage for a while, but when I'm performing in some way, um, and I've got and I'm doing these car videos, I guess it's helpful. <laughs> so, uh, the human body's fucking wild, man. It's wild. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, still, you know, I'll, I'll kind of give the brief on the announcement that I made yesterday, um, which is that, uh, you know, the, my, the amount of videos that I'm going to be putting out is probably going to be reduced uh, for a while in the coming year, um, not because I, I want to particularly, really, oh my goodness, this lady is killing me here, okay, not because I particularly want to, mass confusion about lane changes here, uh, but because I'm gonna, uh, be looking for a part-time job, uh, and I don't know what this part-time job is going to end up becoming, um, you know, some of you might know that I already have a little bit of a part-time gig that is, um, no, it's it's a it's a good it's a good uh, part time gig. I you know taking care of this elderly lady. She's a sass machine, uh, very sassy. Uh, uh, every day she's surprised that Alex Rebecca's there. She's a little bit of dementia, but you know she's she's great. Uh, she's very funny, and uh, you know it's it's a nice gig. Um, but it right now I got more. I got bills that I, I have to take care of. Uh, I'm, I'm making, you know, roughly about half as much as what I was making as a touring performer. Um, so I have to supplement the other half of that income from somewhere. I'm going to bring the virtual shows back once a month. Um, you know, pay anybody that wants to become a sustaining member, if they have the ability to become a sustaining member or want to make a one-time donation. Some people have made some incredible donations and I'm incredibly beyond grateful beyond grateful for these people. Um, so instead of like, you know, four to 10 videos in a week that I normally would drop, uh, they're they're probably going to go down to about, about four or five a week. Um, and that, and that's unfortunately the way that it's got to be, uh, you know, once I get this gig, just to make sure that I can, uh, supplement that income and take care of some bills. And I'll, I'll probably get into a little bit more in detail of, of, of some of this stuff that's going on. Uh, I can't really talk about it a whole lot right now because I'm still in the midst of it. Uh, but, you know, there's financial reasons, reasons for, for, for making the decision that I'm making. 
and I hope that you guys will still stick with this channel. I hope that you guys will get tickets for um, the live shows, uh, the virtual shows, when the virtual shows uh, do kick back up. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to try to do some of the, the more live streaming and things of that sort. Um, unfortunately, the car videos, I can't really do live streams because I tried to look up, I tried to look for some stuff with like live stream apps and, and none of those are pretty, none of those are really great and they're kind of expensive if I want to do multi-platforming. So... I think the I think the goal is to try to do as much live streaming as as I can in 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 tandem with some of the more written pieces. I'm also working on a couple of other things in terms of like gifts for for people. I wanted to I wanted to do that, um, but because I you know my laptop was uh, MIA for a week and a half, uh, I was not so I'm I'm behind on on making some of the things I wanted to do for the Christmas season for the holiday season here. So, uh, rest assured, I will be getting some stuff up. I want to, I want to have like a real tangible merch, merch store, um, for, for people, uh, to, to get from my band camp. I, I know there's some people that want physical CDs and things of that sort. Um, so rest assured, I will be trying to figure that out <clears throat> and, um, and go from there. Uh, so yeah, that's my little announcement up at the top. Uh, it's, it's again, not exactly where I wanted to be, fought this as much as I could and, and tried to pivot in whatever direction I could, uh, in regards to, um, you know, making sure that I can, I can continue to make comedy work in the virtual landscape. Uh, but, but it has proved uh, far more challenging uh, actually, let me let me talk about this real quick. I brought this up to a friend of mine. Um, I did have an idea in regards to to pivot to the digital landscape and still be quote unquote on tour, right? And the idea was basically this: uh, if you've seen my virtual stand-up comedy shows that I've done over the course of uh, the last year. Uh, then you you probably know how they work. Um, you know, I sell tickets like I, like it would be a normal show, gather the emails, and then use the ticketing platform to send out an email with the uh, Zoom virtual theater invitation uh, about an hour before the show. If you were um, a venue, my, my plan was... And, and I didn't figure this out quick enough because I, I basically wanted to run myself as the guinea pig uh, and figure out the glitches and stuff <clears throat> and then essentially create a, 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 t- idea, a, like a template of sorts of how to run Zoom shows for a venue. So, you, so then you could just book... Um, you could just book the year out like it's a regular tour, uh, you would be the, the venue manager, owner, uh, uh, whatever, would be the person that would kind of keep an eye on the showroom, the digital virtual showroom via Zoom or Discord or however. Zoom is what I'm more familiar with right now uh, because it was just accessible for me and would allow the most amount of people. So essentially... You can also continue to do a similar door deal so that you can, you know, keep the venue open uh, through this difficult time and pay for the Zoom thing. Uh, And then you just run the show. You have your audience come in. Uh, If it's a comedy show, you can, you know, monitor how many people have their mics on. If there's feedback as the venue manager or the sound engineer or whatever... Um, you just monitor, and if you hear feedback from particular people, uh, you can turn off their mics, you can mute them, you can turn on mics, you can rotate people, uh, and, uh, you know, and everybody, everybody would win. That was my plan over the summer, (coughs) and, you know, as things kind of progressed, um, I, 
I wasn't able to put that plan into effect because venues started doing their own things and I didn't and I was like okay if this is something that works for you I don't want to throw the wedge and your plans were already in like a stressful situation <laughs> why would I want to add more stress to this already stressful situation right uh, so that's kind of the, the the space that I was in um, and that was kind of the the plan for uh, for, for for the virtual shows. I mean, it can still be if, if venues want this idea. I, I, I just didn't have the energy uh, and quote-unquote manpower to reach out to as many venues as I know to, to, to pitch this idea, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, I know a lot of venues ran concerts and live-streamed them and so on and so forth. Uh, and did virtual shows, and some venues were doing in-person shows, uh, which I don't particularly agree with. But there are some venues that are are are, are making it work. Um, point being, I wanted to create a template that would still allow for touring to exist on the virtual landscape in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Unfortunately, that didn't that didn't pan out. I'm I'm just one person, um, and essentially, you know, I would be the one person that would have taught a bunch of venues how to do Zoom shows uh, if they if they wanted to do if they wanted to do that. Option still on the table, obviously. Is you know, uh, but we have various other things that that, that are helping uh, independent venues like save our stages and and things like that. Uh, so, and and just regular patrons giving donations to people is kind of fucking amazing. Um, but that was a thought that I had. Anyway, I want to get, get, want to get into the, uh, to the crux of today's discussion. Um, and it's, and it's going to be that quote unquote COVID relief, the COVID stimulus bill. Uh, the gray zone did a fantastic job of of um, talking about some of the uh, weird shit. That's an apt phrase. <laughs> All the weird shit that is in this fucking bill. Uh, first of all, it's almost fifty six hundred pages long. The largest book I remember reading was about 400 pages long, roughly, maybe a little bit more. And I think it was a Gabriel Garcia Marquez book, Thousand Years of Solitude. Fantastic book. That's a book I, I got to, if I still have it in my parents' storage somewhere, that is a book I would love to pick up and just read. I also just read books in general. Uh, I don't get the opportunity to read as many books as I would like. And I have uh, plenty of books that I would like to read. Um, anyway, um, that's the longest book I've read between 400 and 500 pages. Uh, this bill was over three times that amount of pages. And, you know, you had 400 some odd Congress people that were supposed to read this bill and understand it. I don't think the human brain... Uh, at the at the level that it's at, is capable of comprehending fifty six hundred pages worth of legal dribble, <clears throat> and I'm using that term legal dribble because that's exactly what it is. It's a lot of legalese. Uh, it's a lot of fucking like loopholes and contradictory statements that the layman are, are, are never to understand. And I think this brings up, you know, a video that got cr- completely killed on YouTube, by the way. <clears throat> YouTube and Facebook completely killed this video. Um, it got shown to nobody. And when I reshared it, I believe four people saw it. Uh, and, and I'm not the only person to have talked about this. But Mike Gravel is the person that initially came up with this idea where laws should be no more than, I believe, 500 words. Uh, 500 words. 
and they should be written in plain English so that everybody understands them, <clears throat> whether you went to law school or not. Uh, and, you know, um, the, the legislators like this bill. They introduced this bill. Everybody can read it. It's on a public forum. You see people, you, you, can, you can view people talking about it and, and giving their reasons for why this bill is, what this bill is. And then people will vote for it, right? We dictate what legislation gets passed and what doesn't. Uh, we would also dictate what laws we would like to see written. So, you know, we have this force to vote <clears throat> movement that's going on right now to get Medicare for all up for a vote in the United States Congress. If, if we lived in, a, in an actual democracy of any kind, which we don't, we live in an oligarchy and a plutocracy uh, because this is a stolen democracy and it's run by capitalism and capitalism doesn't really allow you to have uh, a true democracy. It allows you to have... Uh, an unequal, unjust economic system running uh, politics, running the, the nature of, of rules and laws and the way people live their lives. Uh, so this is not a democracy by any, any stretch of the imagination. This is not a representative democracy, and it's not a republic. It is an oligarchy. Let's call it what it is. But if we had some kind of a democracy, then we would very easily be able to get Medicare for All written and put up for a floor vote. Uh more than that, I mean, people would have voted for it, and 72% of the people uh, want Medicare for All, according to a Fox News poll. According to a conservative news poll, 72% of the people, that's a super majority. So, you know, we, we, and we know Congress people don't even fucking read their bills. They have interns summarize shit for them. Uh, so again, it's like, why are, why are interns doing the job that uh, Congress people are paid hundreds and thousands of dollars, uh, millions and millions of dollars every single year to do? Fifty six hundred page bill is ridiculous and they snuck some shit in there. Uh, and you know, you have real journalists like the people at the gray zone. And I talked about earlier this year how Gray Zone uh, is not considered to be a, a, a reputable journalistic resource by Wikipedia because Wikipedia is run by an Ayn Rand fanboy that doesn't... They, they discredit fucking Julian Assange, who has never had to retract a statement. And, and they say that New York Times is, is a reputable news source. And over the course of the last five years, I've watched them lie. They lied about Lee Camp. I was at that show. They lied about uh, the that they lied about Lee. I was with Lee when he was working on his re rebuttal piece. I was in New York City. I opened for Lee in the New York City show, and then I opened for Lee a couple weeks later in Atlanta when he was working on his rebuttal piece. I watched them lie, and they're considered reputable by Wikipedia. Bullshit. Anyway, the gray zone outlined um, all of the, uh, what's a polite way of saying, c conveying this, horse shit, and that's me being polite. Uh, if you want me to get mean, I can, but, you know, I don't want to get tone policed. Uh, I want people to actually be able to listen to this, so I'm being polite. Uh, the, the horse shit that is in this quote-unquote omnibus bill is, oh no, Oh, that's still going. That's not good. Red light, please. Red light, please. Okay. The horse shit that's actually in this fucking bill. Uh, the gray zone has fucking did a really, really great job. A really, really great job with it. And I highly recommend you read it. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to cover all of it because then this whole video would just be two and a half hours long of me covering this 5,600 page fucking bill. Um, 
But, you know, again, if we had what Mike Ravel suggested, bills, bills like these wouldn't particularly exist, and we wouldn't have to worry about our internet freedoms being crushed uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, the, the continuation of the uh, horrific American empire. So here's the thing. Uh, there's billions and billions of dollars being put into something called democracy programs. Yeah, democracy programs. That's what they call it. I love that they have the fucking balls to call it democracy programs. The regime change wars. That's what they are. That's what they really are. The regime change wars. It's code for coups to be run in other countries. They're, they're, oh, they're bringing democracy programs. No, they're going to kill people. They're going to run fucking assassination programs, and they're going to run coups like they have in countries like fucking Venezuela and Bolivia and Iran. And it doesn't matter what you think about these countries. It doesn't matter whether you agree with their leadership. It doesn't matter whether you think that their country is doing the right thing or not. Because some a lot of the shit that Iran has done I disagree with, but I also don't think that the CIA should be going in there and running a fucking coup. I don't think our intelligence communities should be trying to you know, install leadership into that country under the guise of democratic... Uh, the, the democratic process or de- democracy programs, that's not what they're fucking doing. They're changing regimes so that it benefits the capitalism in America. And this omnibus fucking spending bill that even AOC voted for has billions of dollars for these quote-unquote democracy programs. You guys remember all that democracy we bought brought to Iraq. You guys remember you guys remember the democracy we brought into Venezuela? Oh, it must be that democracy we bought brought into Bolivia that failed. All we have been dropping democracy on foreign countries for months and years and decades now. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No, those are bombs. Those are bombs that we're dropping, not democracy. Not democracy. But what about the, what about the democracy through the foreign aid that we give to people? Oh, I'm sorry. Those are economic sanctions. That's economic warfare is what, what we're giving to people. And lying about it and spinning it, is, is spinning it through the propaganda machine that is corporate media. We'll come out and be like, oh my God, look at these people are starving in this country. Meanwhile, they're not. The only reason why they haven't received the resources and and the money that they truly deserve, like, like for example, the country of Venezuela, is because of American economic sanctions. Because America says we don't like this leader because this leader won't let us come into this country and just take whatever the fuck we want. So we're going to install someone that will. That's what that's what this spending bill has has uh, put for put billions of dollars forward to do. There's also six point one seven five billion dollars uh, on f- foreign military financing. Uh, that just means they're gonna we're funding the war machine. Uh, they're, they're, we're funding wars is what that means. And that brings the total military budget for this year, the war budget this year, to upwards of 747 billion dollars. Uh, 112.9 million dollars on military training and education. Uh, so now it's upwards of 748 billion uh, for the war budget. And throughout this thing, what I didn't notice was any additional funding for veteran care. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, the argument against anybody that is anti-war is that they are also anti-veteran, which is far from the fucking truth because if you're truly anti-war, what you want to see, is no more fucking veterans. No more 
middle class young men and women and non-binary transgender folks going and fighting fucking rich people's wars. Which is exactly what it is. And if these fucking cretins in Congress actually gave a shit about any of this, they would have put in a couple hundred million dollars worth of care for veterans, but they don't. The war is about their own personal profit and greed. And, and putting the American empire above anything else. And once you've served their purpose and you've gone and fought their wars, they do not give a shit about you. You, you want to know when the, when the soldiers actually get taken care of? When they continue to serve in the military. Once they're out, it, they, don't, no one, they don't give a shit. The military is America's greatest socialist secret. It really is. They could have put veterans care into this. They could have they could have put 200 million dollars into the VA to help veterans get the the services that they need. You thank them for their service, but but you can't fucking do anything about it. They're cretins, is what they fucking are. And the propaganda about anti-war activists, comedians, and so on, that were anti-veteran is total bullshit. Most veterans end up being anti-war. I met a few that are still pro-war. I met a few. But most veterans, after they've seen what, what warfare really is, become anti-war. Continuing forward, uh, there's more money for overseas, what does that say, contingency operations. Overseas contingency operations, that's, that's another thing that's fun, that's in there, overseas contingency operations. That basically means uh, endless wars. They want to continue their endless wars. So uh, if, they, if, if it seems like things are settling and they're like, oh man, the troops might get to come home, uh-oh, there's a, there's a contingency that we need. Here's money for that. Money, money for, for never-ending wars. To continue destabilizing a region that doesn't need to be destabilized. We're bringing freedom by destroying your cities. At this point, the war budget is well over $800 billion. Uh, $300 million goes to prevent Chinese influence. And uh, the article points out the CIA coup it, it, that they, the CIA was using activists in Hong Kong last year, maybe a year or two ago. Uh, I'm not well versed in that. I, I, I know the general gist of what happened. Um, but, you know, basically the CIA was using activists to spread anti-Chinese propaganda. Um, and, and, the, and this bill is solidifying it, $300 million, to basically put more anti-Chinese propaganda out there uh, just in case. Just in case. Just in case it wasn't enough. Now, there, there's a, there's, like I said, there's a, there's a ton more in this bill uh, about the Middle East, about Iran, and, um, you know, keep, keeping those wars going, expanding the war wars and basically trying to get into a hot war with Iran. Uh, but the craziest of all of it is they want to control the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama, the succession of the Dalai Lama. Uh, and I know Steve Poinkinen from uh, Action for Assange uh, pointed out to me on Twitter when I, when I just think this is so fucking funny that that America wants to control reincarnation. So, so how do they, how do they control this metaphysical, spiritual thing? Is that they try to legislate it? They're like the laws 
of a bunch of corrupt, crony, old fucking people will control divinity. Now, Steve, Steve Poinkin did point out that, that the Dalai Lama has been in the, in the pockets of the CIA for a long time. Uh, something that I am not, again, not particularly well versed in, but I trust Steve and it's definitely on the list of researching because it's hilarious that the CIA is like, how do we control spiritualism? <laughs> this seems to be something we can make money off of. Because that's what capitalism does. Everything is a fucking dollar sign. There's no there's no limits on, on what does and doesn't have a dollar. Your fucking health has do- a dollar sign on it. And, and, and you don't think that the Dalai Lama and spiritualism is going to have a dollar sign on it? Of course it is. It's a matter of how to use the CIA and the intelligence communities to control it. And of course, what what does divinity always listen to? It's a piece of American legislation. This is the thing that truly is a little scary for people like me, uh, all your favorite content creators, is the, uh, the provision that basically says that if, if uh, there's a copyright claim, then we can, we can be fined and imprisoned. So, you know, if I want to use a journalistic source, I want to use a video, um, especially videos like uh, like the like leaked audio and stuff, and you want to play the leaked audio. If it's up on you, if it's like up somewhere at, on somebody else's channel, or like it's it's copyrighted or something. Even if we give credit and say this is from this source, the content creators that use it can still get fined and still can get put into prison because they want to fuck over copyright laws. Look, copyright laws are already insane. Right, like I, I've, I have a graphic design degree, and that was always part of the, uh, the issue of like when you work for an agency is, does that work belong to you in any capacity, or does it all belong to the agency? Can you, can you showcase what you've done, or you trapped? Like, if, if the agency says it all belongs to us, and you can't use this even in your portfolio or your website to show that this is work that you've done, and and you know showcase your talents. Um, that is that is you know control and 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 it mucks up copyright laws so you do you know it's like you do own your own you do own the, the shit that you make but so does the agency so it gets very complicated and now it's just getting even more complicated that was part of this omnibus fucking covid spending bill that they put out there once again Something that AOC fucking voted for. Rashida Tlaib, I believe, was the only person in the squad that didn't vote for it um, and had the amendment, which we're going to talk about too, uh, for $2,000 checks to be given to the American people. Uh, But, and then AOC just wrote her name on it. Like, AOC turned out to be that kid that... uh, you know, is in the group project that doesn't do anything and they, like, play video games and eat all the snacks. But then at the end, they're just like, I put my name on it. I get the credit for it. You know, like, that's that's who AOC became in terms of that bill. One of the things that did pass, I, I briefly brought this up at the beginning of this, uh, at the, uh, you know, the beginning of this video is Save Our Stages. The, the Save Our Stages Act did get passed. Uh, $15 billion, I believe, is going to independent venues, small small businesses, independent venues, bars, restaurants, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, put, put, put forward by uh, the National Independent Venue Association, NEVA. Uh, I had Jordan Grobe on my podcast to talk about this effort. Uh, great podcast. Good, good people trying to do good things. Now, here's, here's the thing. Um, Forbes, which is what reported on on this uh, on the on the passage of the Save Our Stages Act, claims that it's Chuck Schumer and Amy Klobuchar who really made this happen. Which is bullshit. They didn't even know about it until Save Our Stages went and presented their fucking legislation that venue owners wrote. Venue owners got together and decided that there needs to be a coalition to help save save. 
uh, independent venues across this country. And, and they wrote the bill and presented it to Congress. And Amy Klobuchar was like, yeah, this seems like something that'll make me cool or whatever. And it was like, yeah, OK, a bill like this needs some kind of mainstream support to get off the ground. Uh, and, and it did. And again, one of the members went and, and testified in front of Congress to basically be like, this bill needs to pass. You know, uh, well, they, they talk in the podcast. He brought up um, one one dollar spent at a venue is, is about twelve dollars spent in the community. And with venues being shut, that's essentially thirteen dollars per person that is just not coming into this community, these communities anymore. Um, which is, you know, terrible and sad. And that's why our communities are, are suffering as much. So that's, that's a positive in this, but that's one very small positive. In, in this there are plenty of fucking horrific horrific things and and Forbes isn't even giving credit to the to the people that made this happen this is not this, this bill is is the longest bill that's ever been written. It's the worst bill that's ever been written in American history. Earlier this year, we had a corporate fucking giveaway. A corporate fucking giveaway. And now we have a giveaway to the Empire. We have a giveaway to the Empire. And pittance, six hundred dollars to the American people is all all they passed. I know some people are gonna get upset at, uh, about me criticizing AOC, as as most progressives often do, and most uh, and all faux progressives often do. Uh, if you're honest with yourself, you know which camp you belong in. But if you haven't turned this video off because I I dare to criticize AOC. Think about it this way. Bernie and AOC voted for uh, that the, the first shit stimulus bill uh, that gave us $1,200 after all of them, AOC, Bernie, Tulsi Gabbard, uh, eventually Kamala Harris jumped on board, eventually Cory Booker jumped on board with $2,000 a month. Ilhan Omar was also talking about a UBI and you know within weeks they they bent their they bent the knee and they settled for a one-time payment of $1200 in hopes that they can renegotiate and get more pe money for the American people. Well all they were able to do was get you $600, a total of $1800 in 9 months during the 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 worst pandemic this country has ever seen, the world has ever seen in and uh, a manufactured depression worse than the Great Depression, which was also manufactured. The collapse was caused by uh, the, the uh, authors of uh, the Federal Reserve Act. And the argument they used to get this bill passed uh, was an argument I have heard uh, a lot, which is, well, you gotta, you gotta watch out for the greater good. I'm, uh, there, there are more good things uh, in this bill than not. It's sort of the argument that you heard. Well, there's positive aspects, and I'm, and I'm voting for the positive aspects of this bill. Yes, there's a bunch of corporate giveaways. Yes, Wall Street gets more money, but oh, uh, PP, uh, PPPs and the PUA, that's important. And I'm not saying that it isn't important. Those were very important things to have in that bill that probably helped a lot of people survive through the summer. But this stimulus bill, that argument doesn't work. 
that argument doesn't work. So for Rashida Tlaib to be the only person in the squad that really pushed back against the party bosses to say, no, I'm not going to fucking vote yes on this bill. You're giving the American people next to nothing. And this is a insane fucking build, build to expand the American empire through war and justification of war. This bill is propaganda. And the only amendment she could get through was $2,000. But for AOC to say, I'm going to vote on this anyway, uh, and then tack my name on to something else that some other representative... No. You can't come up with the justification that there was anything good in this bill to fucking vote for. The justification of six, $600 is, is nothing. For a lot of people, it won't even pay bills. It won't even cover rent. We're about to see major evictions across this country. Nobody should have passed this bill. It should have been completely overhauled. It should have been looked at as absolutely disgusting. You should have thrown the bill out the second it hit the floor when you heard the word democracy programs. There's no justification for someone like AOC who calls herself a progressive to vote for a neocon, neoliberal, fucking war boner bill. This is a war boner bill. This is just them having a boner for their own, for the fucking, for war. And now people are like, yay, she's, oh, she, look at look at how well she did with Rashida and they're, they're helping. They're not fucking helping. I'm so mad my beard hair is getting into my, my mouth. That's how mad I am right now. This fucking bill is a joke. And it is horrific. If you, I mean, this is how authoritarian uh, regimes start. But we've, I mean, we've been doing these kind of bills forever. They sneak certain things in, right? Like, oh, we'll do UBI, but we're also going to put this bill that lets us just bomb anybody we get to deem a socialist forever. We're just going to, you guys want to pass that? And you should be like, no, we want to pass the socialism thing. And and if you don't, we want to pass the UBI thing. And if you don't want to just look, look at this bill all on its own, then I don't think we have much to discuss here. The end. It's a negotiation, and guess who always loses in the negotiation? The people. Corporations, the war machine, always, always get whatever the fuck they want. No, no arguments, no discussions. Then, when it comes down to helping the people, there's always a discussion. Oh, it's, it's got to be strategic. That's why this bullshit is happening with force to vote. It, it should not be an argument. There, there is almost no reason for anybody to sit there and say, oh, we can't do Medicare for all. We, we, we can do Medicare for all. It's a matter of political will that we don't. It's the same thing. It's a matter of political will that, the, that, that legislation isn't written for, for regular people to understand. Which is why journalists have to break it down and comedians have to break it down. We are doing what fucking Congress people elected by the, uh, 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 by, by the people are, are, are not doing, are unwilling to do. I want to move to the second story that I want to address because I know that was a long segment there. Uh, just the B- Bernie versus McConnell. That, that's that's been a big thing that's been uh, that's been happening. Uh, it's talk. Of, it's the talk of the town. It's the talk of the town. 
Bernie Sanders is basically saying that he won't, uh, he will hold up the defense bill, the NDAA, uh, you know, that's going to give $740 billion to the war budget. He's going to hold that up unless Mitch McConnell uh, allows a vote to happen on the Senate floor for $2,000 uh, stimulus checks to the American people. Right now, the $600 checks only goes to some people. It's the same thing as a $1,200 check. It's only eligible for some people. It's not eligible for all people. And uh, Bernie is, is basically calling Senator, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, a.k.a. the Human Turtle, uh, to, to just have a vote. And, and what's McConnell do... It, McConnell blocks these things all the time. He just blocks votes. That's what he does. It's primarily what he does. He doesn't. He doesn't legislate or anything. He just blocks votes. He blocks. He blocks important pieces of legislation from coming. He is. He is the ultimate. He is the human embodiment of apathy. And you can tell because his skin is so apathetic to just stay on his own body. That's how apathetic he is. Now, everybody's praising Bernie. And and by the way, this is the Bernie Sanders I would have fucking loved to see, uh, you know, in, in, in the Democratic primaries. I would have I would have very much loved to see this Bernie in the Democratic primaries. It would have been the best. Uh, but it was not it was not the Bernie we got to see in the Democratic primaries. It was uh, he was very oh I'm gonna I'm gonna be the good boy and I'm going to you know play nice with uh, with all of the Democrats that are effectively trying to fuck me over. And I know they're trying to fuck me over. But I'm gonna be nice to them anyway. Now, here's the thing. All the people that are praising Bernie Sanders for saying that there needs to be a vote on the $2,000 and we're going to hold up Congress till we get a vote on this should also be praising Jimmy Dore and Nick Brana and Cornell West and Lee Camp and... Anybody that has been for the force to vote campaign, anybody that's been pushing the force to vote campaign should be getting this kind of praise. If you're not, then you're a fucking hypocrite. You're the tone police. And you don't actually give a shit about these issues. What you care about is celebrity status. Oh, look, I don't. I, I'm not someone that's like, oh, I fucking hate Bernie Sanders. No, I, I, I like Bernie. I, do, do I wish that Bernie would have been better in the debates? And do I wish that Bernie would have been a little bit harder on fucking Joe Biden? Absolutely, motherfucking tootly. I think Bernie kneecapped himself. Uh, he was absent on a very important vote about the Patriot Act earlier this year. You know, I, he, is, he has disappointed me on various different levels. And I think, I think if anything we've learned from the last four years is nobody belongs on that level of a pedestal. Uh, we, we shouldn't be worshipping heroes. We should accept our heroes. We should, and, you know, we should amplify our heroes. But we should also hold our heroes' feet to the fire when we need to calling them out on the on 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 bullshit so you know there you have it there that, that that's why i think this is a good thing that bernie is doing but i also think that it's no different than what jimmy Dore is doing uh the only difference is jimmy Dore is a drag off comedian self-proclaimed drag off comedian and bernie sanders is a prominent senator uh who, and, and now it's like, great, the Democratic Party should be fucking behind him. 
every single Democrat. I, 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 every single Democrat should be on Bernie's side. Pressuring Mitch McConnell. But Nancy Pelosi is not. She won't. You won't see her do that. You won't see a lot of Senate Democrats do that. And they might be. At, at, the, at the time of this recording, I don't, I don't know of any information about uh, Senate Democrats that are coming out in, in um, favor of what Bernie is doing. If I'm wrong, leave a comment. But this is no different than what Jimmy Dore is doing, and everybody should be on the side of both Bernie and Jimmy at the same time. Now, here's the thing, right? Mitch McConnell is probably going to hold up this vote uh, and will... Somehow or another, the defense bill is going to pass because it's about war, right? Um, the, the fallacy in, in this is very similar to Alaska having UBI. Even though UBI has been proven to be successful in the state of Alaska, it's, it's connected to the fossil fuel industry. Um, so this is sort of the same thing is because now... We're connecting what Bernie is doing with expanding the military budget, expanding this war budget we have. Uh, that's the downside of it. Of course, Bernie is using the knowledge that the war budgets need to pass. Uh, it, you know, it's important in, in a country that is primarily built on war that it will pass, that it needs to pass. Uh, and, he's, and he's hoping for that. He's hoping for that sort of stuff. I don't know if McConnell's going to agree that $2,000 is enough, but now here's somebody that can make it work. What about Joe Biden? Now, Joe's big claim is that he reaches across the aisle. He's an aisle reacher, if you will. Right, he's always in, he's he's on the Senate floor. Just go. It's just oh, there's an aisle. I'm reaching. I'm reaching across of it. That's Joe's big. Look at his record. He's reached across the aisle for racism. Will he reach across the aisle to get two thousand dollars for the American people? Being that he is the great reacher of all aisles. And where is the pressure on Joe Biden to fucking do that? You won't see any. Because that is a failing of Democratic Party voters. They will not hold their... I mean, it's a failing of anybody, even Republicans too. You know, Republicans don't hold their their guys' feet to the fire either. But Democrats should right now. I mean, the dude promised healing, and uh, what's a better way to heal than financially stabilizing the country by ensuring that the working class isn't going to be all homeless? And then homelessness becomes illegal, and then the prison population skyrockets. Like, what is... is didn't Joe Biden say that he was going to be the uh, uniter? Well, here you go. Unite get the Senate Majority Leader to unite. The fear that Mitch McConnell has is that if we put it up to a vote, there is a very good chance that enough Republicans will see that the American people are suffering and they need help, and if they don't get help, they're not getting reelected, and there goes their, their, their fucking careers in the cushiest job of all time. Now, Joe Biden has the ability to do that, but he won't. And I'll tell you why. It's because if $2,000 is the the one-time payment, he has come out and and made a statement in in some fucking press briefing or whatever that uh, more stimulus is on the way. So this is sort of a down payment for the American people and and more stimuluses are on the way. So let's say... $2,000 $2,000 gets passed for every American and it comes down to after inauguration the first 100 days he's going to try to get the American uh, working class out of the destitution that they're in well what's he going to do give us 
Give us 1,200? Why would you give us less this time than before? The precedent has to be set. That's why $600 was voted on. Because because the precedent has to be that... Um, that they're not going to actually help you financially. That they're going to give you pittance and the breadcrumbs and that needs to be enough. And if it's not enough, it's a bad thing. You have people like fucking Larry Summers who caused the 08 collapse coming out and saying that $2,000 to the American people is going to overheat the economy economy and collapse it. Bruh, the economy has already collapsed. People don't have jobs. There's a lot of jobs that people can't do anymore. And the industries that can hire them are are no longer... Uh, they're, they're running out of vacancies, bruh. So you need to figure out how to fucking help people. Larry Summers was under the Obama administration. He was a Biden guy. Joe Biden doesn't want to come out and say, fine, I will sign a bill that will... Give everybody $1,000 a month or $2,000 a month or whatever. And that's how we're going to, you know, help the economy come back to where it was. He doesn't want to do that. Because he's not a socialist. He beat the socialists. He made up. And the Republicans, well, they just don't give a shit, period. And the fear that McConnell has, because McConnell's biggest goal is just to win. And how do you win? Is that you just make sure that bills like this don't go out onto the floor to be voted on with the possibility of loss. And mark my words, the great aisle reacher that Joe Biden is, he will not reach across the aisle to make that work, which means that he's not really helping people like he said he was going to. Like all the fucking progressives and all, all the fucking YouTube commenters and the comedians that pointed out oh, how shitty fucking Joe Biden really is and why we shouldn't be excited about it. And all those people that came out and were like, oh, you're a Trump supporter. Oh, you're, you're terrible. Oh, you just don't get it. All the people that ignored... All the shit that Joe Biden stands for, all the corporatism, is all coming to the light sooner and sooner. If Joe wants to prove us wrong, here's your opportunity, buddy. Get that $2,000. Reach across that aisle. Get us that 2K. My guess is he won't. And the American people will be left to suffer again. All right, we got one more uh, story to go here, uh, wrapping it up. We have uh, uh, echoes of George Floyd in Brazil. There was a, um, a, a black man that was beaten to death by uh, police in Brazil over Thanksgiving. Uh, so about a month ago this happened. Uh, Unicorn Riot covered it. And I apologize, it's taken me a month to talk about it. Um... I didn't see this being talked about in any other real real media outlets. Uh, but, uh, yeah, black man gets beaten to death by police in Brazil. Protests, you know, most of them peaceful. Most of them are demonstrations. Uh, and the crazy part is it happened on a day where they were saluting and co- commemorating the black population in Brazil because Brazil much like America, has crazy racial divide, has crazy economic divide. Brazil is an authoritarian country. Jair Bolsonaro is, is the abject definition of a military strongman. He's an authoritarian. He is a dictator. That's what dictators look like. And America just has many of them in various positions. I.e. Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi. Some of them got violent. You know, uh, it's unsure whether the police caused or were the spark to said violence. Um, but this is no different than, than the, you know, the actions that 
led to the, the growing Black Lives Matter movement, the defund the police movement in America. Brazil is probably worse than America in, in that sense. I'm not sure uh, how many of their killer cops uh, get let go, but in America we have a lot. Um, actually, Mint Press News put out a pretty good uh, article that breaks down uh, how many people are, are, are killed by uh, police shootings, how many people are victims of uh, police murder in, uh, in the United States. And... It's, uh, it's, done, it's done by this organization called Mapping Police Violence. And they point out that uh, death by cop is the leading cause of death for black males in America. Leading cause of death for black males in America is death by police, is, is, is being murdered by the police. And we currently have a president-elect... Uh, that wrote the crime bill, which is part of the reason why the leading cause of death for black men in this country is the police. And now you would figure, well, that's not that big of a problem, Krish, because you know the cops are taken care of. They they get they get what they're what they are what they're they get what they deserve. 1.7% of killer cops get charged with a felony. It might be less in Brazil. I'm not sure. In the U.S., about 1,066 people have been killed by, uh, by police. Uh, in the U.S., we have seen uh, slogans like Black Lives Matter to fund the police. Uh, a cab, things of that sort, right? In Brazil, the echoes are "Stop killing us! It's not over. I want an end to the military police." And Barack Obama thinks that they're just being too loud with their quippy slogans. You know, the slogans have too much quip on them. Uh, mir- they, it's it's there. There's too much miracle quip on these on these fucking slogans, and they would really do better if they stayed quiet and let the military police do their job and you know if you politely come out to the person that is threatening to uh, beat you to death and say hey if you could please stop that I'm about to die and they would go oh my gosh I didn't realize you know instead of this uh, stop killing us nonsense that these you know Brazilian protesters I mean that's not how you win hearts and minds by telling people not to kill you that will lead them to kill you that's, that's Barack Obama slowly transforming into Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, <laughs> Statements like that from Obama and how Joe Biden, uh, there's a leaked video that I'm going to cover on, on the live stream uh, about how Joe Biden blatantly disrespected black civil rights activists. Uh, and yelled at them. I'm going to cover that on Friday, but um, that's how I know the next administration is not going to do anything about these grim statistics. If you want to, if you really want to be this force for good, and and put these you know regime change kind of uh, stipulations in certain bills, right? Like the stimulus bill we saw. Uh, why don't you run a coup to get rid of Jair Bolsonaro? Why don't you have a war to help women get to, get rights in Saudi Arabia and and you know stop human rights violations in that country? The next administration does not give a shit about racial strife at home or abroad. They give a shit about a country that is going to let them come in and perpetuate more capitalism. Take whatever resources they want. And they need to be able to be this authoritarian force at home and away. That's why the police are doing what they're doing. That's why 1.7% get barely sentenced to anything. Just saw Tamir Rice. He was a kid. With a toy gun. And he got killed. And that cop 
No sentence. Brianna Taylor. The guy's getting convicted for accidentally shooting a door. Not murdering this woman. The cop that killed George Floyd is getting a lesser sentence. The next administration, I'm, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm going to say this now, is going to do dick all for the issue of police brutality. Tamir Rice was under Obama's watch, under Biden's watch. So was Eric Garner. So was Mike Brown. So there were hundreds and thousands of people that got killed by the police. It's going to be up to us. And we're going to have to get things done on a local level. So support those those actions. The other thing I want to talk about, too, is the BREATHE Act. Uh, I want to look into that. Uh, a few people sent me that a while back, and that's it's been on the agenda to talk about for a while. Um, I don't know what the status of it is or anything, but I remember looking into it a little bit, and it was it was something we're talking about. So maybe I'll bring that up on on Friday's live stream as well. But I don't think Joe Biden is going to do anything to heal the country. I think Joe Biden uh, is a a man that has wanted power for a very long time, and he finally got it. And now he's going to show us what he's going to do with it. And it's not going to be altruistic. It's not going to be noble. It is going to be to ensure that him and his corrupt crony kids uh, have a leg up over everybody else. And they will perpetuate more wars. And they will perpetuate police violence. And they will continue to perpetuate uh, the, the income and racial divide in this country. We... Uh, have to be against that support your local protests support the people that say to fund the police hold your politicians feet to the fire if you were somebody that voted for joe if you're somebody that campaigned for biden you should be outraged at the way that he reacted to those civil rights readers you should be outraged at the fact that he's staying silent over the bullshit no sentence for the cops that murdered a 12 year old child And you should demand that he wants to. And if, it, and if he doesn't do that, then you know what? He's not worth the salt being a president. He shouldn't be your president. Neither should Trump, but maybe that'll get people to open their eyes and realize what the system actually is. And that there is no, there is no one man that's going to be the savior. It's going to take a collective effort for all of us to do our parts. We're going to bring this to a close. Uh, I hope everybody has a happy new year. Uh, this year has been rough. Like I said, 2021, 20 we're going to see some changes on this channel. If you have the ability to, uh, if you have extra finances, if you're in a stable financial position and you want to become a sustaining member, uh, a couple different ways you can do that. First of all, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. Uh, various different ways from Patreon directly on my website, PayPal, uh, various different ways to become a sustaining member. The other way is by going to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha and, um, and subscribing there. By becoming a subscriber for $10 a month, you get not only all of my uh, content, it works on a freemium model, so some, some content is premium, some content is not, uh, but you get my content, but you get uh, Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, uh, Kim Iverson, you get Whitney Webb, uh, you get Lee Camp, Jimmy Dore, uh, tons of shit for uh, for just ten bucks a month. So you know, if if you're like, hey, I don't really like Disney, Disney Plus, it's bullshit, or I don't like Netflix, or I'm I'm done with cable. Great, this is this is a great way for you to uh, invest your money in something that is going to specifically help content creators um, and not censor us. So uh, trying to build that Rockfin up a little bit more. Um, so if you uh, if you want to, you can go to rockfin.com slash Krish Mohanaha and, uh, and check it out there. Uh, I'm going to be putting out a new podcast tomorrow. I'm going to be uh, doing a live stream on Friday. 
Uh, but this is the last Road Reflections of the new year. The Blue Leaks episode was the last forkful of the new year. There's going to be a bunch of videos that I'm going to be dropping, some new stand-up clips uh, from way back. Uh, I'm going to be uh, working on a couple different projects here and that I'm excited about, you know, some merch projects, some new website updates, uh, things of that sort. So keep an eye out, um, and thank you all for, for, for supporting me through this, through this year. I know it's been difficult. I know it's not been the most ideal year, um, but uh, it, it was definitely made a lot easier through, um, through, through some core group of people and a lot of you out there that support the shit that I do, and I am, uh, I'm infinitely thankful for that. Uh, without... With that said, I'm going to bring this video to a close. Happy New Year, everybody, and uh, we'll see you on the road.